Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I wanted to talk about the single player in Battlefield, and more specifically, why I think Bad Company 2 had one of the best campaigns out of the franchise. I bring this up because the recent Battlefield games, 3 and 4, they've been pretty lackluster. I know that some people really enjoyed them, but I think for the vast majority of the community, they would agree on the consensus that they haven't been all that impressive. They've had some amazing spectacles. The graphics are phenomenal. There's huge explosions, towers falling over. Like, there are some really cool set pieces here, but when you get down to what makes a good game, or at least what I think makes a good game, story, characters, and gameplay, 3 and 4 have been really uninspired. And so what I wanted to do today was talk about the many reasons why I've enjoyed going back and playing Bad Company 2, why I could basically sit down for five hours and play throughout the entire campaign, and go over some of the many reasons why I think that this really has to be one of the best of the series. And so the first thing that we have to talk about is the gameplay. Going into this originally, I thought that it was going to be a little bit of a disappointment. First of all, it's an older game. I just didn't think that it was going to stand up the test of time, but from what I remember of Bad Company, I remembered it to be fairly linear. This is true for basically every AAA shooter that has come out recently. They, get, they, they force you down a long hallway, you have a couple of options on how you can approach combat, but for the most part, it's hide behind this dumpster, kill everyone in front of you, and then push on forward to the next objective. That's basically AAA first-person shooters in a nutshell right now. It was true with Battlefield 3, and it was definitely true with Battlefield 4. But the magic of Bad Company 2 is that they went all out with the destruction and that mechanic. Bad Company 2 was basically the start of destruction in the Battlefield franchise, and they went crazy in the campaign. Basically, every single building that you come across is fully destructible. You want to shoot an RPG at a wall, it's going to crumble down. You shoot enough RPGs at a wall, you're tired of all of the enemies congregating in that building, Building, it's gonna crumble and they're no longer gonna be able to use it. This leads to some of the best gameplay that I've had in a AAA campaign in a very long time. It's still very linear, like don't get me wrong, this isn't Far Cry or an open world game where you can attack an objective from any different direc direction or however you want. It's still very linear, but because they added in that destruction, maybe it's just me, but that made the game infinitely more enjoyable. It made the maps more dynamic, it felt like I was actually in combat, because I would enter a village that was pristine and all the buildings were intact and by the end of it There were holes everywhere or all of the buildings were destroyed It just it just made the game so much more enjoyable and it made me question Why weren't these moments in integral parts of Battlefield 3 and in Battlefield 4? There were some moments in those games where you could use destruction to your advantage But for the most part like every other shooter out there even like Call of Duty the destruction came in large set pieces that happen Levolution and why? Wow, they're cool, they're epic, seeing a skyscraper fall on over is always awesome, but that doesn't make it feel like you caused that. That just seems, it's more of a, a set piece, it's a cinematic, it's kind of like you're watching a movie at that point. But to have it an integral part of the gameplay, like they pushed in with Bad Company 2, at least for me, it made the gameplay way more enjoyable. Another thing I loved about the campaign were the characters. That is the greatest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Let's just go get the damn satellite. There was some genuinely funny dialogue and moments between your squad mates. I was laughing out loud continuously throughout this campaign, and while I know that some people critiqued more of the comedy elements, the lightheartedness of Bad Company, because who's gonna be cracking jokes in the middle of war? Uh, at the end of the day, it seemed like DICE realized that they were creating a video game and they just wanted to make it a fun experience and to have this comedy infused into it was the right way of handling it. I mean, when I'm laughing throughout the entire thing and having fun because the gameplay is interesting with that destruction, those two things in combination sounds like they're doing something right. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a video game. You should be having fun with it and if you're laughing and enjoying the gameplay, that sounds like a pretty awesome combination. Uh, not only that, but the characters are just way more memorable because of this. I cannot remember a single character from Battlefield 3. The only character that I remember in BF4 is Wrecker, the character that you play, and the only reason I remember him is because they constantly scream your name every four seconds. Wrecker, go over here. Wrecker, go do this. You're in charge, Wrecker, but you're not. You're never going to say anything, so I'm going to be in charge and giving the orders. Like, it's just, it's just ridiculous. I cannot remember a single character in those campaigns, but because in Bad Company, 
2022, each of your squad mates is distinctive. They're unique. They're likable. I can almost predict in the next couple of years that I'm going to remember them because of that uniqueness. And I think that goes a long way for the enjoyment of any game out there. Doesn't matter if it's a first person shooter, doesn't matter what it is, having likable characters is always going to be a good thing. Uh, one thing I do have to critique it on though is the story. The story isn't god awful, it's not terrible, but it's not great by any stretch of the imagination. It's cliche. I think it follows more of the theme that DICE was just trying to create more of a lighthearted action flick because it has a lot of the cliche moments. You find a, a, some sort of weapon that's going to destroy America, it's going to destroy the world, and for some reason you're a part of the squad that does everything to solve this mystery, to get to get the bad guy, to win the war, and save everyone. I mean, it's it's very cliche in that, in that category. And so out of this trifecta, having good characters, good fun gameplay, and a good story, this is definitely the weakest part of it. Like I said, it's not awful, it pushes, the, it pushes the story, it pushes you in different parts of the world, we're gonna have different gameplay, it really mixes it up, but as I said, it wasn't all that inspired. The thing is though, is that when we compare these three elements to Battle of 3 and Battle of 4, Bad Company is way above the competition. Battle of 3 and 4, they have forgettable characters, the story is awful, they're all cliche, they don't do anything inspiring, and their gameplay is very lackluster. But because Bad Company 2 has two elements that I think are, are, are amazing, I think they do a very good job with it, that elevates that game, at least in my eyes, to be one of the best in the franchise. Uh, but overall, I guess what I'm just trying to get at is that if DICE ever does decide to make another big single player campaign for Battlefield 5 or Bad Company 3, whatever the next big game is, I think that they should do what made Bad Company 2 so great, which is focus on the characters and have a lot of destruction. I realize that there isn't any groundwork or there isn't any bullet points that you can just kind of tick off that's going to make an amazing single player campaign, but if they follow kind of the guidelines that they did with Bad Company, in my opinion, the single player would be way more enjoyable instead of the more dramatic route that they've, going, that they've been going down recently. Uh, but I'd like to get your guys' take on this. Do you agree with me and you think that I'm on to something for why Bad Company was one of the best? Do you completely disagree with me and you thought that Battle of the Three was a much better game? Or would you rather DICE just focus on the multiplayer and no longer spend resources on something that, let's be honest, they're not really good at? For all the praise that I just gave Bad Company, realistically, when you compare it to the awesome single player games out there, like The Last of Us or Bioshock, they, it doesn't even come close to those types of games. And and would you just rather them spend their resources on just creating an amazing multiplayer experience? This may actually happen. DICE, the guys that are creating Star Wars Battlefronts, aren't having a single player in that because according to EA, people aren't playing those games for the single player, and I have a feeling that's gonna be the same for the Battlefield series. So maybe in the next big Battlefield game, we won't even have to worry about this because they'll pull all of their resources into the multiplayer just to bring us the best multiplayer experience that they can deliver on. And so give me your thoughts on this topic down below. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the topic that we discussed, uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy. Thank <laughs> you.